this is notes for 11.7 finite differences. Uh, to begin with, we're going to talk about looking at models for data. This is something we've done uh, pretty much every new type of function that we've looked at. We've looked at a way of modeling data with that function. We're going to do the same with polynomials here. Um, but in order to do that, we have to first examine this idea of finite differences. Uh, first of all, the idea of, of a model, there's an exact model and an approximate model. When we talk about an exact model, it's a, it's a model equation in which every data point is exactly model, is, is exactly on the graph of that particular equation. Whereas an approximate model is a model of equations such as the set of data in which a scatter plot of the data points closely fit the graph of the equation. Okay. Uh, in this lesson, we're, we're looking at um, finding exact uh, polynomial models through these data points. Okay. To do that, let's look at the idea of differences between values of polynomial functions. And what I need you to do at this point is just take a couple minutes. I need you to stop the video. I need, need you to do ex activity one, uh, which I have listed here in your notes. So if you could go through that, you're going to need your calculator to do it. And uh, once you go through that, and then I'm, I'm going to touch upon that in just a little bit. Okay, I have here then um, in your, the, my, my calculator of, of each of those uh, different functions. So if I look at uh, the first situation where I have a degree two or a quadratic uh, polynomial, uh, you'll notice that once I hit the second set of differences that the values are all equal. Okay, and I hope that you found the same thing when you did yours. And if I look at the the other the, the other polynomial that we had, which was a third degree polynomial, you'll notice that they were equal at their third set of differences. So in terms of uh the the last step there where it says make a conjecture if we have a fourth degree polynomial well chances are pretty good that they would probably be equal at the fourth set of differences and this leads to the polynomial difference theorem and here's what the polynomial difference theorem says it says y equals f of x is a polynomial function of degree n if and only if for any set of x values that form an arithmetic sequence Okay, so the x values have to be going up the same amount each time. The nth differences of the corresponding y values are equal, and the n minus first differences are not equal. Okay, so in other words, when we looked at the second degree polynomial, the first set of differences were not equal, but the second set were equal. Okay, we looked at a third degree polynomial, the second set of differences were not equal, but the third set of differences were equal. Okay? That's what the polynomial difference theorem is getting at. So uh, it provides a technique to determine whether a polynomial function of a particular de degree can be an exact model for a set of points. The technique is called the method of finite differences. Okay? So at this time, if you could just stop the video and read example one on page 774 before moving on in the video. Okay, let's take a look at example one here. It says, use the method of finite differences to determine the degree of a polynomial function mapping A onto B. So we have these values, and what I want to do is I want to keep finding the differences between my B values until I get to the point where they're equal. Once I get to the point where they're equal, whatever level that is, whatever difference number that is, that's going to give me the degree of my polynomial. So what I'm going to do just to kind of help with the calculations is I'm going to go ahead and put that into a spreadsheet in my calculator. And then I can go ahead and for each value here, so in this cell right here, I'm going to take the difference between these two. So I'm going to put equals, and then I'm going to take this number minus this number. Okay, and we'll find that difference. And then I'm going to just, to ease that calculation, I'm just going to fill down. So there's my first set of differences. And as you can see, they're not equal yet. So now I'm going to go to my second set of differences. 
So I'm going to put equals. It's again this number. Minus this number. Times it's 12. And once again, I'm going to fill down. And not quite equal yet, but as you can see, now we're getting a pattern here. So the first set of differences were not equal. The second set of differences are not equal. But on the third set of differences, 18 minus 12 is 6. 20, um, 24 minus 18 is 6. 30 minus 24 is 6. So each of those is the difference is 6. Therefore, since the third set of differences are is equal, the uh, exact model for that particular set of data. So uh, you want to take a look then at, at number 2 here. In number 2, it says, uh, consider the sequence a defined by the recursive formula a sub 1 is equal to 4 and a sub n is equal to 2 times a sub n minus 1 minus 1 for integers greater than or equal to 2. It says identify the first six terms of this sequence. Well, the first six terms, the first term is 4 that was given to us. And then for each additional term, I'm putting the previous term in, multiplying it by 2 and subtracting 1. So I'd go 4 times 2 is 8, 8 minus 1 is 7. 7 times 2 is 14, 14 minus 1 is 13. 13 times 2 is 26, 26 minus 1 is 25. 25 times 2 is 50, 50 minus 1 is 49. And finally, 49 times 2 is 98, 98 minus 1 is 97. So that would represent the first six terms of that sequence. So here's term 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Part B says use the method of finite differences to determine if there is an explicit polynomial formula for this sequence. Okay? So what we want to do is find the difference between each of these uh, until they're, they're equal. So if, if I look at between 4 and 7, the difference there is 3. The difference between 7 and 13 is 6. Between um, 13 and 25, that would be 12. The difference between 25 and 49 would be 24. And the difference between 49 and 97 would be, uh, let's see, 48. So there's my first set of differences. And they are definitely not equal. So let's go to the next set of differences. I have 3, 6, 12. 24. That's our second set of differences. Definitely not equal yet. We've got 3, excuse me, uh, yeah, 3, 6, and 12 here. And then I have 3 and 6 here. And finally, down here, I have 3. So, if I go to the third and the fourth set of differences, and actually even to the fifth set of differences, it's not until I get to the point where I have nothing else there uh, do I get where they're equal, because there's nothing else for it to be equal to. The pattern of differences just seems to repeat. Uh, we would say that there is not a polynomial that would fit this data. Okay, then I'd like you to just stop the video at this time and uh, do the guided example number two here below and see if you can complete that and then I'll put the answers up for that in just a minute. <laughs> So if you look at the, here's the answers for that guided example. You'll notice that using the uh, recursive definition, we can kind of complete that sequence. We got 3, 7, and then 15, 31, 63, and 127. Um, and then in terms of, um, in terms of the uh, um, 
part B here. Well, if I look at the first set of difference and the sec second set of differences, just like uh, the previous example, uh, the pattern between the differences kind of begins to repeat. So we had 4, 8, 15, 31, 63, 127 for the first set of differences. And then for the second row, it was uh, 16, 32, 64. Third row, 16, 32. So, um, so you know, the, if you look at the second row and third row, or first set of differences and second set of differences, um, that, that pattern is just repeating. Therefore, we're not going to have a polynomial that will, um, that will model that data.